Oh, I'm the naked historian, now that's just what I am. And I'm a searching for history throughout this fabled land. No matter what they do, no matter what they say, I'm gonna search for the history of the gallant blue and gray. Greetings! This is the Naked Historian. I'm Michael Albrecht, and it's great to be with you again. Can you believe it's been 10 years since season one of the Naked Historian? I can't. I'm a little rusty, the Stonewall Jeep's a little rusty, but we're still kicking, and we've got some great sites in the Spotsylvania Fredericksburg area that we're gonna share with you. Today, we're at a site on the corner of Benchmark Road and Tidewater Trail. It's about a quarter of a mile up the road from the Slaughter Pen Farm, which is a part of the Fredericksburg battlefield. The Slaughter Pen Farm was the site of the largest preservation campaign by the Civil War Preservation Trust, in which they were very successful in, pre in preserving multiple acres of land from where most of the vicious fighting of the battle took place. They were also successful in saving this small parcel of land by working with a local land developer called Silver Company. Now, Silver Company, being the largest land developer in Spotsylvania County, has been responsible for a lot of urban sprawl that I'm not happy about. But in this case, they got it right, so I got to give them their props. Now, because this is such a far neglected site, it was difficult to find information on it, but I was able to do some research online and get a little bit of stuff to give you a background. We don't use scripts, we don't use storyboards, and we don't use cue cards here at The Naked Historian. So I'm gonna to read to you the information that I was able to get online. It says, during the Battle of Fredericksburg on December 13th, 1862, a young major named John Pelham, under the cover of an early morning fog, positioned two cannon far in advance of the Confederate lines on the flank of three Union divisions which were preparing to attack the Confederate position across Slaughter Pen Farm. One of Pelham's guns was destroyed by counter-battery fire after its first shot. But with the one lone Napoleon cannon, Pelham held up the Union assault for nearly two hours. Robert E. Lee observed the fight from nearby Prospect Hill and remarked, it is glorious to see such courage in one so young. For the remainder of this short but eventful life, he was known as the gallant Pelham. Let's check out the site. I'm gonna get out of the vehicle right now because I wanna show you, I'm gonna turn this around, how far you have to walk to get to the site. As you can see it there, it sits on the corner in between these two roads looks like the grass needs cut and people drive past this every single day stop at the stoplight and probably never take a look to see what's here off in the distance you can see a CVS pharmacy that's actually where I get my prescriptions filled so I come here on quite a regular basis and as we turn here You'll see a lone cannon representing Pelham's cannon. And I'm not an artillery expert, but I know that this is called a Napoleon, which is a smooth bore cannon that was used by both the North and the South throughout the course of the Civil War. Panning over here, there's a stone representing it. It says Stuart and Pelham, Battle of Fredericksburg, December 13th, 1862. I'm gonna take a walk over here, closer to the road, to where there's a street side marker. It reads, The Gallant Pelham. Here, Major John Pelham, commanding Stewart's horse artillery, executed a stunning flank attack on advancing Union troops during the Battle of Fredericksburg on 13 December, 1862. 
reduced to one cannon, the 24-year-old Pelham halted the Federals for almost two hours by employing the flying artillery tactics that he had so perfected. Observing from a nearby hilltop, Lee explained, it is glorious to see such courage in one so young. Lee's battle report commended the gallant Pelham. The Alabamian was fatally wounded three months later at Kelly's Ford on the upper Rappahannock River. Let's take a walk over here, past the stone, past the cannon, to where the tabletop markers are. Here's the first one. Shows you a picture, an artist's impression of a mounted Pelham directing the fire of his men. Here is an image of him, of what he looked like. The tabletop marker says, the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia had no braver officer than Major John Pelham. Although just 24 years old, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Alabamian had already proven himself on more than half a dozen battlefields in Maryland and Virginia. Pelham commanded General Jeb Stuart's horse artillery. On December 13, 1862, as Union troops deployed on the plain south of Fredericksburg, Pelham received permission from Stuart to bring a single cannon to this intersection. From here, he fired down the length of the Union battle line just 400 yards away. Pelham's actions provoked an immediate and savage response. Within minutes, more than two dozen Union cannon and Pelham had Pelham and his artillery crew under fire. Undeterred, the Confederate officer continued the unequal fight, occasionally shifting his gun to throw Union artillerists off balance. Three times, Stuart bid Pelham to retire. Three times, Pelham refused. Tell the general I can hold my ground, he replied, with his ammunition running low. Pelham brought his gun off the field. His actions delayed the Union assault by nearly an hour and propelled Pelham fame to new heights. There's also another marker here for the Battle of Fredericksburg. There's a map, give you an idea. It says, this landscape now changed by commercial and residential development. Yeah, no kidding once swarmed with Union soldiers, 40,000 Northern troops led by General William B. Franklin, having crossed the Rappahannock River, massed here on the plain south of Fredericksburg. A like number of soldiers led by General Edmund V. Sumner occupied the, sand, sound, the town itself. Franklin and Sumner had the same objective, drive the Confederate Army from its stronghold on the heights west of the river. Franklin would attack the right end of the Confederate line at Prospect Hill, one half mile to your left, while Sumner attacked the left end of the Confederates at Maurice Heights, west of Fredericksburg. Franklin deployed his troops one quarter mile in front of you. One quarter mile in this direction. There were no trees at that point in time. You could see straight from here all the way down the road to the Slaughter Pen Farm. It says at 10 a.m. December 13, 1862, as he was making final arrangements for the assault, the sound of cannon fire broke the silence. Franklin himself was under attack. Here's a picture of the battlefield as it appeared in 1893. So as you can see, it was a wide open plain where you could see from here all the way up and past the Slaughter Pen Farm. This wide open area was filled with troops that witnessed some of the most savage fighting of the entire Battle of Fredericksburg. And that is why it was so important that it was protected and preserved to be studied and visited today. So the next time that you're down here at the stoplight at Benchmark Road and Tidewater Trail, take a couple minutes, take the pier to your right. If you're so inclined, park over here at the Family Dollar, get out of your car and take a walk over here to Pelham's Corner. It's a place that is hallowed ground for sure. And I hope that you've enjoyed this trip to this far too neglected place. Until next time, thank you and God bless.